and welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. This tutorial is going to show you how to create a double jump. Um, and this tutorial is the current highest one voted for on my website. If you're interested in voting or suggesting tutorials, then go to holistic3d.com slash tutorials and have a look at the list of voted for uh, tutorials there. Okay, so to begin with, we need to create a character. Now I'm gonna use a capsule. Um, because a capsule and a capsule collider are pretty standard for putting around a character. So uh, as you can see, I've already got a plane in this 3D scene with uh, just a directional light. And that's all that's in here. So first of all, let's create our capsule. Okay, so here's our capsule. Now you see by the green around it, whoops, too far. This bit of green here is that it already has a capsule collider that you can see attached in the inspector. And we're going to start moving this character uh, around on the screen. So we're going to create a controller for it. Now, before we do that, um, because this capsule is nice and symmetrical, when we're rotating, we can't actually tell which way is forward. So I'm just going to add a cube to have as the front face of this character. Now, can you see when I added it, I selected the capsule first and then added from there which made the cube a um, child. So let's just resize, well not everything, just the cube. Let's resize this cube and we'll just move it so that it's sticking out from the front face and that's going to be like the eyes of our character. Next we're going to create a controller, so go over to the project and create C Sharp and we'll call this controller and attach that code to your capsule. Alright, so now let's add some code in here and we'll begin with some really simple code. Um, that just drives the character around with the arrow or the WASD keys. And for this, as I've used in other tutorials, and I also um, used it in the how to create your own FPS controller, uh, was to use the code that comes with Unity. Now, if you go to um, Unity and you search for get axis, the first thing that you get is an example of using the axis system, which is the vertical and horizontal um, movements which are mapped to your um, arrow keys and WASD keys in this case by default. Now um, it's really handy this so I always just grab the um, code that's right in the center of the class, copy that and we'll just go back to Unity, open up the controller code and replace the insides of this class with the stuff that was on their website which is our drive code. Now if I save that and go back to Unity and run it, I'll be able to move the character around. Okay, so we can rotate and we can move him. Right, now we want the character to jump. So the easiest way to do this is to use the physics system. Uh, and because we've got a collider on it, we're going to add a rigid body to our capsule and uh, turn on the gravity to start with so he will fall down um, to the ground. So let's just move him further away where he's going to go through the ground there. Okay, so just lift it up a bit. Now select the capsule object and add component rigid body. And that will give him a mass and gravity will be turned on. We don't need to do anything with that at the moment. Let me show you what happens when we start to move him. So he'll fall down to the ground and whoops, he's going to fall over. You'll still be able to drive him around and rotate him. But the thing is, the um, complete physics system has gone a bit array because of the fact that he's got a nice rounded bottom. So it's quite hard to keep something upright when it's got a rounded bottom like this. If there's any force applied, it's going to tip over. Uh, this is quite a common problem for people when they start creating these character controllers. So what you want to do is go to the rigid body in the inspector that's on the capsule and freeze the rotation in the X and the Z. So he can't tip over sideways and he can't tip over forward. He can still rotate around the Y axis, which is this green axis going up. 
like this uh, so he can turn around in a circle that's fine now while I'm here I might just actually scale him up just a little bit as well so I we can see him a bit better okay so now if I play he will drop to the ground and I'll be able to move him without any worry of him tipping over now that the uh, physics is on him and he's got a rigid body we can add the jumping code back in the controller class we're going to add some code at the end of the update function after the code that we pasted in before and I'm just going to paste my new code in for here for you and it's saying if the input key down is the space bar then it's going to add a force to the rigid body that we just added to the capsule so get component rigid body um, these angle brackets and then rounder brackets will get hold of the rigid body attached to the character um, to sort of this game object and an add force is going to add the force using the up vector so it's going to push in an up direction um, multiplied by some magnitude of how much strength you want in that jump so if you want a bigger jump then you would put 300 or 400 if you wanted a smaller jump then you'd have a less value in there okay so save that let's go back to unity and let's just run it and see what happens when we hit the space bar okay so I'm hitting the space bar and he jumps now if I hit the space bar continually he will double and triple jump as you can see there because there's nothing stopping me to constantly press down on that space bar and um, to keep adding that particular force now the nice thing about the having the physics system already on with that rigid body is he's going to come back down to earth by himself so uh, we don't have to um, program that part of it now the next step is to restrict him from constantly being able to jump up and up and up and up because we don't want that okay we only want him to be able to jump when he's on the ground and then maybe double jump if he's already in the air performing a jump so um, we need to check if he's on the ground before he can do a jump so um, to do that let's go back into the code and what I'm going to do before this space uh, if statement is to put in this code here so let me just show you what it is okay so we're doing a physics ray cast hit and what we're going to do is project a physics um, ray which is well a ray is a straight line okay so in the environment we're going to project a ray straight down which is in this bit of code here uh, so let me start from the beginning I guess I'm working out where the physics center of the object is okay so we're taking the um, the character's position and we're adding to that the collider's center because sometimes the collider can be off center now if it's at the actual position center um, of the character's position then this center is going to be something like zero 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 anyway so it won't add anything um, but I've added this because sometimes if the position of your actual character which will happen with some characters is on the ground here then it's quite difficult to project a ray downwards and hit the ground if the thing character is sitting on the ground there needs to be a good distance when you're projecting a ray down to see if it hits something between where that ray starts and where it goes to um, and basically if you project a ray out of the bottom of your character and you hit immediately the ground it, it might not actually find the ground does that make sense so what I'm doing is I'm starting my ray from up here and projecting it down through the character to figure out if we've hit the ground or not now um, if you have a really long ray it doesn't really matter where your character is it's still going to project down and eventually it will hit the ground but by restricting how long the ray is um, I'll come back to this debug line so this ray cast here starts at the physics center of our character which is going to be right in the center there it's going to project a vector down which means it's going to go this way um, now this hit value that's coming out is the position where that ray hits something if it does and the one at the end is how long our ray is okay so if it's here 
to here or here down to here. So we're going to start with one just to see if that works for us. Now if this um, physics ray cast returns a true value that we've actually hit something, then we're going to do a further test to see that we haven't hit the player because the ray coming out of the player um, is going to hit its own collider and we're not interested in that. We're interested in what's underneath the player. So our player actually has to be called player, it's tag. So let's just quickly do that while I'm thinking about it. So select on the capsule and in the tag up here, we're gonna tag it as player. Player is a default tag that you can select from that list and you can also create your own. Okay, so back in here, um, we're checking that the thing that we've hit isn't the player and therefore if you've hit something we're going to say on ground equals true. Now this on ground is a boolean value that we're going to set up in a moment. Now if we don't hit anything with our ray cast, we'll go to this else statement and, and it will go that on ground is false. So we haven't hit anything. Now I've got a debug.log down here. It's going to show us our value of on ground. Um, which is useful for figuring out how long we need to make our ray cast, which is currently one. And the debug draw ray I've got here is just drawing the ray that's being used by the physics so we can see it as well and how long it is. Okay, now before we run this, we need to create this on ground variable. So at the top, I'm going to add a bool called on ground. And let's just set it to true um, because that code further down is going to figure out whether it should be true or false. Right, let's save it and play. All right, now we can see here, here's the ray that's being projected. If I can get in a bit closer for you. And you'll see it's coming from his center and it's only making it this far. So it's not even getting down to the ground and our debug that's returning um, a value of whether it's being hit or not is sending us a false. So it's saying that he's not on the ground when he actually is. So that means we need to make this ray a little bit longer when he is on the ground. Let's go back to that code. Okay, so in here, we're going to make our ray cast a little bit longer. So let's make it uh, 1.2. Now, if you wanna see it, represented like that, then we also need to um, modify our vector three dot down in the draw ray. So it's the same length. So we have to multiply that by 1.2. And these are float values. So we have to put an F on the end, something that always trips me up. Okay, let's save that. And we'll go back to play. Okay, so it's still not long enough and we're still getting a false. So let's try another value. Um, let's go to maybe five. So it's gonna be one and a half times longer than its original value. Play, okay, so on, he's hit the ground and our debug line is saying it's true that we are on the ground. Now, if I hit the space bar at this point, as he flies up, that should say false. I, okay, you probably can't see it, but in the debug line, as he gets off the ground, it starts to say false, I'm not on the ground. And then when he gets back, it's true. So now we have a nice little system that's telling us um, when he's on the ground and when he's not on the ground. So given we've got this Boolean value that tells us whether we're on the ground or not, we can now use it in our if statement with the space bar to only allow jumping if we are on the ground. So we can put an and in here. So if the space key is hit and we're on the ground, on ground, um, then allow jumping to occur. So save that and switch back. All right, so let's run it and try it out. Okay, so no matter how much I press the space bar, it's only going to register a jump when it's on the ground. So that system's fine for jumping singly, um, just one time when you're on the ground. But if you want a double jump, uh, it's not going to work because a double jump is something that occurs when you're already jumping and you hit the space bar again. So we need 
to add some more code that's going to test for this case and we still want it to be on the ground before we take our first jump so we'll leave this in here but I'm going to add some more conditions just above this if and make it into an if then else statement all right um, now in this piece of code I've got this value called can double jump and that's going to be a boolean value and can double jump is going to be false until you've actually taken a jump so down here we will put can double jump equals true just like that then at the top of our code we're going to add that boolean value so bool can double jump and set that to false so we want it to be false all the time um, and the option to double jump only occurs if we've already taken a jump so back down the bottom here where I've got this code, that's what this part here of the if statement is saying. It's saying if the space bar is pressed and we're not on the ground and we can double jump, then we will force another jump to happen. And then that can double jump will be immediately set to false, which will stop this firing again while we're still in the air, which means you can't keep pressing the space button. And you won't ever be able to double jump again until you've hit the space bar when you've been on the ground and actually taken a jump. Okay, so save that and let's go back and try this out. Okay, so our jump still works. Now I should be able to double jump. And if I keep pressing the space bar, I don't know if you can hear me trying to press the space bar, but it's only ever letting me do a double jump. It won't let me do triple jumps. And that's basically it um, as far as a double jump goes. Now we've also got him still moving and he can do a double jump. He can do a single jump while he's moving or he can do a double jump while he's moving as well. Okay, and you might want to go back into the code at this point when you're ready to use this and get rid of those debug drawers and that um, so that they're not constantly running. They're always good to have in your code, debug.log and those um, draw ones because you can actually see what's going on and I use them all the time, especially this debug.draw ray. If you're doing anything with ray casting, it's really good to see that actual ray um, because often people we will be doing a ray cast and say it's not working it's not hitting the object and whatever and it's probably because it's not long enough uh, so it's always a good idea to draw it to see if it's actually long enough uh, and just to keep playing around with these sizes right so um that's it for this tutorial uh thank you for everyone who recommended that I do a double jump tutorial and it's actually not that hard or a lot of code when you get into it so um, it's just the logic that can screw with your mind a little bit um, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you in the next tutorial <laughs>